Hi, my name is Dr. Chandra. I'm a pediatrician with Preferred Medical Group. And today's topic is how is ADHD diagnosed? So first, let's go over the DSM-5 criteria of ADHD. The DSM-5 is a book and a reference source which is the gold standard for any mental health condition. So per the DSM-5, the criteria for diagnosing ADHD are as follows. The symptoms must be present or symptom onset must occur before 12 years of age. The symptoms must be present in more than one setting. The duration should be of more than six months in time. And the symptoms must cause a handicap or an impairment in at least two areas of functioning. And this is really important because at some level, ADHD is like shades of gray. It's not black or white, which means all of us have ADHD to some extent, but we don't treat all of us. So when do we treat? When it is causing impairment in at least two settings. So if it's a child, we might say it's causing impairment at home and at school. If it's an adult, it's causing impairment at home and in their work life. So that's how we have to diagnose ADHD. Now, there are multiple other factors that come into play and therefore the diagnosis is very nuanced and it's not straightforward like anybody can read the DSM-5 and diagnose ADHD. It's also important to note that other diagnoses can mimic ADHD and that is probably one of the biggest challenges while diagnosing ADHD. So what are some of those diagnoses that mimic ADHD? Number one is learning problems. I come across this every day in my practice. At least 20 to 30 percent of parents who bring in their child seeking an ADHD diagnosis leave my office because I tell them your child has a learning problem and not ADHD. Another diagnosis which commonly mimics ADHD is anxiety. So what anxiety does to an individual is that it makes them look around and be worried and not be able to pay attention. So anxiety mimics ADD in some ways. So does depression and very rare cases, absence seizures. What are some of the comorbid conditions of ADHD? That means whenever we diagnose ADHD, it's almost the rule that there are going to be other diagnoses present along with ADHD. And it's very, very important that we diagnose those other conditions and treat them adequately and not just the ADHD. So the common conditions that are found along with ADHD are ODD, which stands for Oppositional Defiant Disorder. There's also mood disorders, there's autism spectrum disorder, there's auditory processing disorder, and some others. So what are the steps to diagnosing ADHD? The first and foremost is a very thorough clinical interview in which the physicians will get a very detailed history from the parent, feedback they've had from the teacher and observe the child, get a detailed social history as to what the child does on a daily basis and how his performance is being affected by the ADHD symptoms. We also get a detailed family history because there tends to be genetic penetration. Then if the physician believes that there is enough cause to believe that ADHD is possible, they're going to get standardized rating scales completed. There are different rating scales, Connors, Vanderbilt, and some others, and each physician uses the one that they are most comfortable with. But essentially, it will comprise of a questionnaire for the parent and a questionnaire for the teacher. So then the physician analyzes these, scores these, and hopefully discusses it with the family. Also, to get a more objective assessment, a lot of practices are using continuous performance tests. And we have one in our office called the QB test. In fact, we're the only office in the area that offers the QB test. And I like that because in addition to the subjectivity of whether or not a child has ADHD, I'm able to get objective data, which very effectively helps me rule in and also rule out ADHD. So this test is very, very useful and we use it for children who are over six to seven years of age. So, to summarize, ADHD diagnosis is very nuanced and it takes a lot many years of experience in doing this. And at some point it becomes both an art and a science. So if you or your child are suspecting ADHD, I highly encourage you to seek out a physician 
who has done this for several years and is well experienced in diagnosing and treating ADHD.